Hello, hi, Sharon Bill here. I'm continuing a series where I'm working through all of the scales on the piano and now I'm getting to F sharp minor scales. If you want to catch up on everything that's gone before, there's um, descriptions in the links below and also check out the cards at the end of the video and if you go to SharonBill.com, if you go to my website there's absolutely loads of resources there for you there are free PDFs to help you organize your scale rotors and there's also links to other things that might help you if you're taking your theory exams there's a theory book for you there's so much there this is available on Amazon as well this is an Amazon ebook or paperback uh, there's so much there for you to look at so by all means check out all of the previous videos via the links or the description at the end. So now let's crack on with F sharp minor scales. We'll begin with the harmonic minor. This scale is related to the key of A major. There's a reason why that is. We can either work it out in terms of steps of tones and semitones and also we can work out the formula using the circle of fifths and um, we know from that that this is related to A major and so it would have a key signature of F sharps, C sharps and G sharps and then to make it harmonic minor we have to also raise the seventh note so the E natural becomes E sharp so you just have to watch out for that there now we have to get the fingering pattern unwrapped a little bit first before we can establish it properly and then if you want to extend to three or four octaves you just keep repeating the pattern once you've got the fingering pattern established. I'll show you what I mean. So we begin with finger two on F sharp. We need to tuck under after the G sharp finger three. So here's our A, that's our related key. The minor third of the scale will always give you the re related key. C sharps. Now we begin the fingering pattern properly where threes are here, fours are here. So tuck under after finger three to the natural, raised seventh. Now your sharps to finger four. There's our related key, the minor third. C sharps, tuck under after three, raise seventh, and finish on your home note, your tonic note of F sharp. Back we come, so we need to go three, four, three on the way down. Raise seventh, D, three over as your C sharp. Now four over gives us our G sharp, F sharp, E sharp, three over, C sharp, and then just to finish the scale, three over. If you were continuing, you'd go four over to continue, but because we finished our two octaves, three over to finish. So we need to unwrap a little and then it's three, four, three. Let's have a look in your left hand. So we begin the fingering pattern straight away here. No need to do all the unwrapping. So it's fours in this section, threes in that this section, four, three. And so we begin with finger four on F sharp. So we've got our F sharps and G sharps straight away. There's our A natural, the related key. Three over onto the C sharp. D is a natural, but then we have our raised seventh here, which is the E sharp, four over for this group. Sharp, sharp, there's our A natural. Three over for C sharp, raised seventh, finish. And so we tuck under straight away, and this is our group where it's three on the C sharp, tuck under after that. Here's our group of four, and after the F sharp, we need the raised seventh of the E sharp. Tuck under after three. And there are our two sharps to finish. So don't get confused by the fact that the E sharp is a white key. It just means a raised note, so we raise to E sharp, which is this key here. Every scale must have a step, and so we allocate each note, and we've got 
a D, an E sharp, and then an F sharp. We don't want to duplicate any notes, so you wouldn't say F, F sharp. It doesn't work that way. We need to see it in step. Let's put that hands together. So it just takes a little bit of unwrapping to get it going, and then your fingering pattern will be established. So here we go, we begin with finger four in the left hand, finger two in the right hand. Tuck under here. Now threes in this section. So tuck under in your right hand again after three. Stretch to your E sharp. So this is our four section. So four over in the left, then four in the right, tuck under. This is our three section, so finger three on the C sharps, tuck under in your right, unwrap and stretch all the way to the E sharp, and then just point to finish. So E sharp, stretch to D natural, this is our three section, so three over here, tuck under in your left now. This is our four section, so four over in your right, then four on your left, tuck under, now we need E sharps, stretch to D naturals, this is our three section, so three over here, three under in your left, and because we're not continuing any further, we just want three over here to finish. It takes a little bit of practice, I recommend that you do play it hands separately then together, and then once you feel like you're getting it flowing, think in twos just to give it a little bit of musical direction and to also hide the lumps and bumps because we tend to be a bit clunky with our thumb, it's stronger. And so if you talk, you can think in the accents musically in groups of two rather than just where your thumb falls. Here we go. sharp harmonic minor two octaves in similar motion going in the same direction. Let's try F sharp harmonic minor in contrary motion now so we're going to go in opposite directions in the harmonic minor form for two octaves. I think this is quite a tricky one although it's only got three sharps in the key signature F C G and then the raised sharp E sharp so although it's not got that many sharps as such, I think the fingering pattern can be a little bit tricky. So look, let's look at it hands separately to begin with. Unfortunately, because the right hand begins on finger two and tucks after three straight away, and then we need to tuck after three again, we only really establish the three, four, three fingering pattern here, and then it's kind of finished before you've got it going. You never really get a chance to see the progression of the 3-4-3 three, three fingering because there's so much unwrapping to do at either end of the scale. I'll show you what I mean. So we begin on F sharp with finger 2, F sharp, G sharp, tuck under after 3, and now we begin the 3-4-3 three, three pattern. So 3, tuck under, raise 7th. So now we get to the finger 4 section. 3, tuck under, and we finish here on three. So we've only actually used finger four, tuck under once here. Let's return back. Three over, four over, three over, three over again. So we only actually get to use finger four, tuck under here in this section, just the once. In the left hand, we begin with finger two, and we have to tuck under straight away, so we've got to unwrap the fingering before we can get the fingering pattern going. So we've got F sharp with finger two, tuck under straight away to the E sharp, there's our raised seventh accidental, stretching down to the D. So now we can begin the fingering pattern, three, tuck under, four, tuck under, under and we finish bringing it back in three over raise seventh four over three over raise seventh and then point over with finger two to finish 
So let's pop that hands together. I always find it helpful, I've mentioned before, it's not really possible to look in two directions at once. Your eyes won't go in opposite directions and maintain focus. So I find it easier to concentrate on the left hand and just keep glancing to the right when I feel like I need to. And I also find it helpful in this scale to just think I've got to watch out. The one place I often feel inclined to go wrong is missing this B. So we need to aim for the B. We need to aim for the D and then the E sharp. So I look for that pattern in the white keys. That might help or maybe that's not what you find tricky. Here we go then, I'll go slowly. Three tuck under in your right. Three tuck under in your left. Four tuck under in your left. Now four tuck under in your right. Three tuck under in your left. Three tuck under in your right. Now bring it back in. Three in your right. Three in your left over in your right, now four over in your left, three in your right, three in your left, three over in your right and point to finish twos. Let's have a go at that a little bit more fluently. I suggest that you practice that hand separately. If you're going to practice it hand separately to practice for the contrary motion, they begin with your left hand at the top and descend and then come back, come back upwards in the order that you would do for contrary motion. Let's have one more go. And this time we'll let it flow a little bit more musically and we'll count thinking in twos just to give it a little bit more rhythmic direction. sharp harmonic minor in contrary motion two octaves. Now we'll look at F sharp minor but in its melodic minor form and so that means we've still got the key signature of A major, the related major key, F sharps, C sharps, G sharps. However now we also have to raise the sixth and the seventh as we ascend and then coming down as we descend we just use the key signature alone. Let's just look at the right hand of that. So we begin on F sharp, G sharp is part of the key signature, tuck under, after three, this gives us our related key, that minor third gives us our related key, A major. So here is our raised sixth now, raised seventh is E sharp, back to the key signature, F sharp, G sharp, a natural, B natural, C sharp is the key signature, raised sixth, raised seventh. So now we've gone from F, E sharp to F sharp, one to three. I've missed out two because now we're going to come straight back down in the key signature only. So it's three over onto the C sharp, four over onto the G sharp, no raised seventh, straight to E natural, three over. Now it would be four over here to continue more octaves, but we're finishing here, so three, two to finish. Let's have another look at that. Raised sixth, raised seventh, key signature. A natural, B natural, key signature of C sharps, raised sixth, raised seventh, finishing on finger three so that we can turn it straight around and three over, four over, straight to E natural, three over, and it would be four over to continue but we're going to finish the three over just to round it off. Let's look at the left hand. So we begin with finger four on F sharps. Here's the 
is our natural with aim B. C sharp is your key signature, raised sixth, raised seventh E sharp, four over. Key signature of F sharp, G sharp, A natural, B natural. C sharp is your key signature, raised sixth, raised seventh. And now we tuck straight away, so tuck under straight away because we want threes in this section for your C sharp and then we want fours in this section for your F sharp and your G sharp. Tuck under to E natural, no raised sevenths, three and finish on four. Let's pop that hands together. It's a little bit tricky because you need to change your fingering patterns whether you're ascending or descending. So it's worth practicing them hands separately quite a bit. But let's try it hands together now. So we're beginning with opposite fingering groups because we've got four starting here but we're going to tuck under after three here. So three over here for your C sharp, we're going to have opposite fingering groups because we've got four on the D sharp, raise seventh, so now we want four over in your left, but it's going to be three tucking and under your right, three over in your left where it's going to be four, now tuck in your right, but now finish you can finish with two or three in your left, but it's got to be three here because we need to tuck straight under and we're going to tuck straight under in your left and your right hand's going to continue because we want threes together now. The fingering's going to form in similar groups here, but we want fours in this group, four in your right, four in your left, both threes together, tuck in your left. Now it would be four over to continue the pattern, but we're going to finish after two octaves, and so it finishes there. It's a little bit tricky, so I suggest you practice it frequently, hands separately, and then pop it together. We'll just have one more go, hands together. helpful to you. There's no real way of learning to play these skills apart, apart from, oh excuse me, apart from lots and lots of practice. And so you know you need to just allocate yourself some time, just carve some time aside. If you're in a rush and you're not concentrating because you've got your eye on the clock more than thinking about your scales, you're not really going to make the progress. So you know more haste, less speed, just keep practicing. Um, and there's a satisfaction in knowing that you're doing a thorough job and just take your time and gradually, little by little, you will get there. Keep popping back to the video, check your fingering and just keep practicing. Thanks for watching. I hope that's been helpful. Again, if you want to check out why we're talking about these key signatures, why we raise sixths and sevenths for the melodic or why we raise the seventh for the harmonic and why it changes as we descend for the melodic minor scale, by all means, check out the cards and the links at the end of the tutorial here, at the end of this video. Look out in the description at the bottom there's some links there to help you. And again, by all means, check out on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, there's loads of resource there to help you and there's loads of information for you to browse through. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.